everybody needs an advocate. Because I'm not there 24-7. Families that have hemophilia mature faster. I've been feeling a lot of anxiety lately. I'm so tired of being strong. To understand how far we've come helps you appreciate where we are now. No is just no for this person. Somebody's going to say yes sooner or later. And it helps you understand that there are more steps to be taken in the future. You're the first person I've met with a bleeding disorder. Let's fight the disease and not the people who have it. I lived most of my childhood and going into my adult life not really acknowledging hemophilia. I didn't want to be seen as a hemophiliac, I wanted to be my own person, it wasn't my primary identity. And then as I got older, I wanted to be a part of uh, a community, and that is what kind of led me into the open arms of hope and talking to people and families and then realizing that this part of me that I hadn't been acknowledging actually really needed to find a home, uh, and this is where I found it. It's kind of almost like depression where you tell yourself, I'm the only one. And then when you hear people that, that are part of that community, that have those experiences that are very similar to yourself, you're like, I'm not the only one, you know? And that kind of is uh, uplifting on its own. Jorge, your son, was diagnosed at birth as yes. severe hemophilia. And that's when you also learned your factor levels. That's right, I found out that I have mild hemophilia. You know, I don't think my story is atypical. Um, having mild hemophilia, I didn't have a lot of experiences of bleeding, but then when you get a label to it and you look back, oh, that isn't normal to have a menstrual period last for 45 days, or to have a tooth extraction and have the tea bag in your mouth for, for days because you can't stop bleeding. The amount of loss and devastation in our community is it's felt by, by thousands. Given the, the chronic condition that we have and knowing that depression and anxiety is the common side effect, it's time to wake up, put my shoes on it, and get started. Gut Monkey is an experiential education company. That means that we design and deliver programs that are really created to look at specific behaviors and how we might change those, think about those, play with those a little bit. We had folks who were in their 20s all the way through um, a gentleman who was 70. He had never learned how to self-infuse. These younger folks um, kind of coached him and helped him get to the place where he self-infused for the first time. There's no health without mental health. Go to the ER, go to you know the children's ward or wherever you want to go, and you will see somebody in a worse state than you. And it, the idea is not, oh wow, thank God I'm not them. The idea is, oh my gosh, it could be worse, and then to use that emotion as a motivator to do more. We can help other people outside the community see that we're not a rare disorder. That is something that we're experiencing, but we're humans working with adversity. And in, in our case, it just happens to be a chronic condition. If we just make it normal to talk about depression, mm -hmm. we can say things like, I get it, you're about to go hide. Let's figure this out. To watch video from any of our previous Powering Through sessions, visit poweringthrough.org. Or to learn more about National Cornerstone Healthcare Services, NCHS, visit nchswecare.com.